Alright, welcome back to Rogue Tech, and welcome back to the Challenge Run Mark II. So last episode, we essentially rebuilt everything, a little bit, and um, I don't remember basically anything we've done, because I've slept since then. So, let's go ahead, since everything's about ready, pop into the barracks, Waiting for order. see if we can get a Drink bit more command. tactics, a bit more Standing gunnery. By. Some more piloting on Dida since he does have the um, juggernaut ability. Uh, who else are we running right now? Commander. Garrisoned. Get him some more gunnery. More your training complete. Uh, Jester. Who is Jester? <laughs> uh, Firestarter. Okay. More tactics and uh, yeah, get him up to guts five. Confirmed, Commander. All right, Judith is Irby. She actually really doesn't need piloting. She just basically needs gunnery and tactics and some guts because she's gonna get hit a lot. Awaiting orders. Uh, Lamia, get some more gunnery. Cool. I'm on the Lucky. What do you want? Get some more gunnery there as well. Training complete. Lucky is our um. Why did I give him focus fire? He's been, it, like, his mech's been, the Bushwhacker's been running MMLs this entire game, and now it's running SRMs as its primary weapons. You know what? Half a million. Boom. He's banded. And cautious. Get these to at least four. And then a little bit more guts. Boom. Alright. Training confirmed, Commander. There we go. Now the Bushwhacker has appropriate uh, bandit on it. Or was I running Pirate Fire Control System? No. Fire Control Mark II. So yeah, there is zero there's zero recoil. Not sure why I gave him focus fire. Not sure at all. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's an assassin, so eventually we want him on a pinpoint mech with focus fire. Um, but yeah, until then, bandit's just gonna be better for the bushwhacker. Aye, aye. Medusa, he was the flea. He is now either commando or locust. Okay. Training complete. Basically, trying to get everyone to at least Tactic 6 so that they are less, like, much less likely to have no sensors. Optio, we've actually dropped on the Locust a few times. Yeah, sure, let's get him to straight fours. And I know I'm increasing my financial report. It's fine, we're gonna drop a couple missions before then. I'm absolutely gonna go with the five gunnery Training here, confirmed, just to help with the ultra auto cannon a little bit. I do need to start getting him higher piloting and I do need to get him to juggernaut. So I'm probably gonna leave gunnery at five, tactics at six, and then push for juggernaut and higher piloting. Probably six or seven piloting first, then push for juggernaut. Receiving you. Uh, Sen, what were you in? Firestarter, I'll scout. One mission each? Okay. Just in case we put you back in the I'll scout, Training let's go ahead and do that. Alright. People are leveled up. Command center is... Full of missions. Full of... Ooh! Higher skull. That's right, we came to a higher skull planet. So, this planet is five skull max. Which is interesting, but we're not really going to get medium mechs from 5 school. We might not actually even get that many medium mechs in 3.5 territory. Mm, coming to this planet might have been a mistake. That's a battle against Word of Blake. Very old mechs. Okay, so this is going to be higher leveled mech warriors in lower value mechs. Which means we might see lights and mediums. It is worth Blake, so there's going to be a lot of them. 
but it's also Word of Blake, so we're gonna get some good stuff. Um, yeah, we're gonna need a little bit more firepower than that. Alright, dropping the commando. Um, actually, wait. We unlocked... We got another slot, right? Oops. Uh, Firestarter was Jester? Yeah, Firestarter was Jester. Hold on. So... Yes, we do have an extra mech slot. Alright, so... Dropping D on the Oz Scout off of Lance 1. We're gonna see what our entire team looks like. And then we're gonna figure out if we've made a terrible error or not. No, actually. Really? Two and a half stars? Just running our four mediums and two lights? That's too much. This is a three and a half, so we need to drop half a star of rating. Um. Hmm, okay. The Phoenix Hawk is running an AMS Mark II, which makes it super effective even if it's not hitting all of its shots. Hunchback is an amazing melee mech. It's gonna be so good. I definitely want to test out the Bushwhacker. Oh, jeez. <laughs> what do I do? Do I drop one of the lights, I guess? Lamy has already got 33 missions on the Wolfhound, so... Minus 10% energy damage taken, 7 more missions for plus 1 accuracy and minus 1 recoil with energy. Plus 1 accuracy, minus 1 recoil. Maybe we run pirate fire control here. Then again, heat. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll worry about that in the future. Uh, for now... I guess we... Drop the fire starter? And can we bring anything else? Commando, yes. Irby, yes. Oz Scout, yes. Okay. I think Oz Scout is the best of those options. Can we also bring Irby? No. Can we also bring Commando? No. We would probably also be able to bring a Locust, but it's fine that we can't. So we're doing a half skull variation um, down, but that's completely fine. Warm up mission, first mission of the day, so yeah, it's fine. Paradox in his hunchback. So we have six mechs versus possibly six mechs, possibly 12, depending on whether or not they have reinforcements. All right, our team looks solid. We got this. All right, three and a half skull against Comstar. Hopefully we see some tasty mediums, like nice non-omni clan tech mediums would be really cool. All right. So since we're against Word of Blake, I'm pretty sure there's not gonna be primitives. And since it's two and a half against Word of Blake, I think it should mostly just be lights and mediums. It could be wrong. Also, it looks like their point is like directly on the top of the ridge line, or on top of the little cluster of mountains or whatever. But I can't drop like anywhere over here. So I think they're either spread out really far or there's two lances. Yeah, I don't want to drop in the water. Uh, I mean, dropping over here could be good. If they are spread out, this ridgeline will protect us to some degree. 
Because if we drop over here, well, then again, if we drop over here, this little mound will somewhat protect us. But I don't like the idea of running over rough terrain immediately. Getting a bunch of stability uh, debuff. Alright, drop in a firing line. And let us begin. Okay. We do not see anybody. There we go. Okay. Despite our decent AMS. I mean, 13 from 40. That's pretty good. Uh, there is indeed a chameleon. Don't we? I think we have most of the parts we need to build a chameleon. So that's pretty cool. Archer. Love to see it. A marauder. Okay. And another archer. Um, wait, I'm pretty sure archers are medium. And there's a quick draw. Yes, Commander. I'm pretty sure archers are medium. But my hit chance be like probably terrible. I mean, I definitely want to get some evasion going. But that is obstructed line of sight. Hmm. I mean, I could eat a USB. Sprint forward, get cover, and EWS ping the chameleon and quick draw. Sure. You know what? Unless this is a yeah, 26.4 and just the large. Yeah, I'm gonna EWS ping. This is primarily just to reduce the evasion of the chameleon. Yeah. And we actually are very limited in where we can go with the cicada, so... Affirmative. Okay. We, we will push to where we can, we will shoot what we can, even though it's obstructed. 39.5. Wow. Okay. We do get, like, all the info, and it is just a boring inner sphere chameleon. I actually don't know off the top of my head if there is like a clan tech chameleon. But yeah, sure. 16 damage. Yes, Commander. Yeah, sure. Double time. Again, Let's just go. this is primarily about getting evasion, not so much about getting damage. Taking the shot. But hey, you know what? We opened him. That's pretty good for, you know, pretty good for obstructed line of sight with only two mechs shooting at him so far. Oh, wait, is that also a scent? Ooh, yeah, it is. I would love a centurion. Like, one of my favorite things to do, like, early to mid game is putting a rack five on a centurion. So fun. Um,. Yeah, I guess we go with three. Yeah, those hit chances. They're even worse than they used to be. Oh, okay. They got better once we got closer, but even so. Like... Yeah, I just, I don't understand why the hit chances are so bad on the Phoenix Dog. Here we go. And yeah, I intentionally fired times two because we had obstructed line of sight and he wasn't open at all. Well, his side torso was open, but the odds of us hitting that specific location were pretty low. Okay, so the LRM-10 on the quick draw is not an issue. Uh, the archers with their LRM-40s, a bit more of a concern. Can I not get unobstructed line of sight to... Okay, you know what? I'm gonna kick the cockpit hot seat on. And we can sprint for four. I think this gives us our best options. Yeah. Also, I think the cockpit hot seat has a lower failed chance um, increase. 
than the Indo TSM did. So we should be able to. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. We should be able to keep it on for more than one turn at a time without generating crit chance. We're just going to use standard because 88.7 is completely fine. Did all five hit? That is beautiful. Love to see it. Okay. Yeah, archers are scary. Okay, that one has pair a uh, pair of LR 15s. So I'm on the clock. What do you the want? one on the ground is more likely to overcome our damage reduction or uh, not damage reduction, our uh, AMS. Sorry if my mic is picking up that truck outside. I really don't want to shoot past my hunchback. But I also really don't want to shoot past <laughs> anyone else either. So I guess I'll shoot past my hunchback. Alright, uh, oh yeah. I... I absolutely need to get in the mech lab and fix weapon orders. Not ideal. Um, okay. We can go Tandem, Acid, or Inferno. That's right. I did not put, like, an actual ranged damage option in here. So he's still pretty solid on armor, but next round we're going to be able to push him really hard. So, I think I'm going to prime him with acid. Alright. And, did we hit our hunchback? Yeah, we did. We hit our hunchback a lot. Oh, jeez. Okay. I should have gone Inferno. That's, that's a lot. Ugh. So, 43 damage we dealt to ourselves on the left torso, 15 on the center, and 26 on the back, or on the right side. Awaiting order. Ouch. Mistakes were made. In any case, let's go ahead and kill this go. archer now. He's primed with acid. Oh jeez, that see. means our hunchback is also primed with acid. That's, that's not good. good That's not good at all. Understood. Moving fast. We don't want our hunchback taking extra damage. Okay. Ooh, Artemis ammo. Unfortunately, it's LRMs. Alright, we took half of the archer down. But he still has quite a bit of firepower. Chameleon is running away. Yes, Commander. That's a charge only, so... Oh wow, I was wrong. We have to turn it back off after the beam first turn. But this should be a kill. On it. I should probably actually have pushed the Hunchback to the left side. Oh well. It's fine. Beautiful. Down. Quick kill. Um. Yeah, Phoenix Hawk's gonna peel off and continue hounding the chameleon. Copy that. Um. We are shooting from the side that has the open side torso. But it's a pretty good chance of us not hitting it. You know what? It's fine. Oh, of course we do hit the open side torso. So we reduced our damage there. Unfortunately. That hit something good. I'm on the clock. What do you want? Alright. I think. I think I'm gonna go for the Centurion. Oh, he only has a oh no, ballistic is crit, not destroyed. So I was thinking of going with, against him with Inferno, but... I mean, the AH has single heatsink cooling. 
So the most heat he can sink in one turn is 30, I think. Unless he has extra in, uh, external heat sinks. This is fine. That's not a lot of heat. But, I mean, running through fire now. Not firing his ballistic. Okay. Systems. I'll oh. take it. Orders. Alright, eight evasion on the cicada. Confirmed. Beautiful. Easy. Easy mode. Just shoot him. Just shoot him from the weak side. Roger that. And take off his side torso. Beautiful. Nice. Got past his armor. Alright, so the Phoenix Hawk and the Cicada should be able to handle the quick draw and the chameleon, I think. I think. But I do definitely want to rotate around the left side of this uh, mountaintop to get up there to those two. Since the Phoenix Hawk and the um, Phoenix Hawk and the Oscout Scout need to stick together so their AMS is most effective. Or as effective as possible. Meanwhile, our Hunchback is going to start punching a Marauder. It's going to be fun. I'm really looking forward to seeing this first punch after Commander. the rebuild. Alright, so Dida. I mean, do I just move here for highest hit chance? Got something you want done? Nah, I want to get closer. Four evasion sounds good. Roger. All right. Hello, chameleon. Confirmed. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Standing by. I didn't want to hit anyway. So we've got seventy-five fifty-sevens. Or 70 64s. Yeah, I will definitely take the higher hit chance here. On the mediums, I mean. Affirmative. Okay. Receiving you. Hot seat on. Punch activated. Cannot go into his back, it looks like. All right, first punch with the new cockpit hot seat and with all the melee punch stuff we put in it. How does it do? Uh. Oh. I mean, how's it going? He's turn eleven. Yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna use Lucky to secure the knockdown there. Yeah, just let's just line up for all the stray shots in the world. It's fine. And I'm actually gonna bump the medium rifle down, Oops. just to make sure that it hits structure. He's probably going to be dead before he even gets to the medium it's rifle, but... Target. Yeah. Alright, cool. One Chameleon one. down. Ow? Yeah. That stray shot. That one. Exactly. That's the one I lined up for. That is exactly the stray shot I lined up for. Alright. Start off getting into the back of the quick draw. Oh, that's so unfortunate that we lost. We literally lost the arm because we lined up for stray shots. Oh, we need to switch ammo on the uh, AMS Mark II. Quick draw. Our wolfhound's getting a little bit beat up, but it's fine. 
It's fine. Uh, first things first. Phoenix Hawk. Caseless. Boom. Yes. I'm on the clock. What do you want? All right. Bushwhacker. Getting in here. Let's make some bad decisions and hide. Getting a knockdown and putting some heat on him. Because why not? Not nearly as much heat as I would have wanted. It's 25. Uh, I think I'm going to replace the Inferno with Magpulse. Because then at least we're also doing the sensor scramble. Standing by. At least then we're also doing the sensor scramble. Um. I mean, yeah, that sounds good. Not thrilled about the whole putting my back to the other enemies, though. But it's fine. Everything's fine. It, it, it'll work out. I believe. I believe it'll work out. Alright, his back is, like, entirely open now. So... Boom. Like that. And firing. Okay. Aye, aye. That, uh... That is fine. Go ahead and Vigilance on the Wolfhound. Uh. <laughs> yeah, let's just put all of our backs to the guys on high ground. Firing at enemy. It'll be fine. Receiving you. Yeah, get started on this archer. Try to draw fire away from everyone else. And we are actually running a little bit toasty on the cicada. Let's see. I like this. So yeah, I think I think we are going to. I, if I remember correctly, there's a tag that we were going to potentially replace with a heat sink. So we're gonna do that. Absolutely. Um. So I think I'd rather hit the Centurion with the heat. Or, actually I am close enough to fire dead fire. But what are the odds I'd actually kill here? Very low, right? Yeah, no, I'd rather try the Inferno again. Just to maybe get him to chill, maybe, for one round. Roger that. Yeah, I'm regretting my decisions. Like, Engaging. turning my back to these guys on the high ground was a big mistake, honestly. Negative damage. Ready. I just hope I don't pay too much for it. Yeah, we gotta turn the cockpit hot seat off. We'll go ahead and go into the fire and flames. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm going to punch him from the front. Yeah. Come on. Center torso. Does not appear to have been center torso. But he is open. He is unsteady. And do I have anyone else before turn 11? No, not really. I don't think I have anyone else before turn 11, so I cannot get another knockdown on him. I should have paid attention to that. Centurion, doing nothing. Cool, our heat worked. They're getting the angle on me. Yeah, I need to turn around now. <laughs> but it's fine, nothing exploded. All right, Marauder should still be slightly unsteady. Yeah, he is. See why people enjoy this line of work. All right, first things first. More backstabbing. More backstabbing, indeed. Uh, the Wolfhound, I want two evasion minimum. Moving out. Since we already lost the arm, I don't want to lose Be anything else. Ready. Okay. Waiting for orders. Now here we go. Ah, right, minimum range. 
Okay, so if I want to shoot him in the back, I basically have to settle for... Oh, wait. There we go. I was going to say settle for two eva or one evasion or being in minimum range. But, nope. I was incorrect. This is a kill. Yep. Exactly. Beautiful. I'm on the clock. What do you want? I think we're actually going to continue the overheat shenanigans. We, we probably could kill pretty easily, but I'd rather actually start shooting the archer with the actual damage. All right, let's get down to it. Oh, did something explode? Well, I Waiting for no, not really. All right, cockpit hot seat on. Punching from the front again. Like, he is so exposed. He's gotta die here, right? Yeah. Wait, was that a head punch? That was a head punch. No, don't keep destroying it. Mech destroyed. Alright, happy to see a head punch. Good times. Good times. But yeah, as I was saying. Gonna get up here, start focus firing the archer. And I know I'm going a little bit overheat here. It was it was very slightly redlining. So I feel like it was a safe shot. Um the Centurion's braced, but he, oh no, he's unsteady. Yeah, he lost his guarded. Cool. Moving to position. So maybe I do just kill him. Engaging with target. All right, he shut down. That's beautiful. Man, they really don't like my wolfhound. Although I, I gotta say, it's a little bit of a nice change of pace yes, compared to them always focus firing my uh, my phoenix hawk. Acknowledged. Speaking of Phoenix Hawk, Phoenix Hawk running a little hot. So the laser rifles generate zero heat. I can always fire them. The medium rifle generates seven. I can turn off just the medium laser. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Waiting for orders. Oh yeah, we have breaching shot on our owl scout. So it doesn't matter if he's bracing. Although he shut down. I mean, 6.3%? Locking on target. Nope. That would have been funny. I'm on the clock. What do you want? Would have also been quite tasty. Full centurion on board. Would have loved it. I mean, I still have 12 Let's shots of Inferno left. High speed. He's already toasty. So, we will turn this to acid, as well as this. And do that. Alright. So we're out of Inferno, but he is quite toasty, and LRM crit. Alright, turn off the cockpit. Yeah, we definitely need to get more piloting on Paradox. I mean, I'm fairly certain this is just a kill, right? Just for the lulls. Nope. Critical hit coming. Oh, he punched out. Okay, actually, compared to going for center torso, I think that actually resulted in one or two, definitely one or two extra yes, parts Commander. of the Centurion being on the table. Um, yeah, sure. On the move. This archer shouldn't be doing much of anything anymore. Roger that. Nice headshot. Good to go. 
Oh no, archers are heavy. Man, what was I thinking of then? Uh, there's a medium mech that looks like an archer. Or similar to an archer. And yeah, here's the point where we turn off one of the mediums, uh, medium pulses. So yeah, we definitely want more cooling on our cicada. Especially if we're dropping in a hot biome. Panic. Commander. Alright. Here we go. Got the angle. Taking the stop. Target's taking a critical Panics. hit. Panic. Yes, okay. Can't do anything Double there. Time. Let's go. I'm on the clock. What do you want? Alright, so... I'm pretty sure he has Artemis ammo. Which I would actually like. No. Okay, so he's a non-Artemis archer. Got it. Doesn't even have an XL engine. Yeah, okay, so this is just a very basic archer. Okay. In that case, never mind. All the damage. Boom. Alright. Easy warm up. So we got 577,000 sea bills. We were against four heavies there. Three Centurion parts. Again, would love a Centurion. Chameleon parts. How many Chameleon parts do we already have? We already have three. If there were two parts, I would absolutely take them. But there aren't. Um, I mean, is there actually anything good here? Case 2. Case 2 is pretty good. Not a priority pick good, but pretty good. Artemis 4. Eh, I'd rather have Battle Computer Artemis. Artemis Ammo. But without the Artemis 4 fire control system, it's not nearly as good. I think I do take it. I think I do take the uh, Artemis 4 battle computer. I mean, not. Fire control system. I think that's the play. Alright. I'm happy with that. Uh, we got Archer part, which we're going to scrap. Quick draw part, which we're going to scrap. An AC-20. Okay. AC-5. We have four. Yeah, I'm just going to... Large laser, cool. That replaces the one we lost. LRM-20, okay. Three medium lasers, add them to the pile. Armor, cockpit basic. We got the SLDF cockpit, that's pretty cool. Some double heat sink, some ammo, sure. Alright, 42,000. Easy repairs. Um, primarily just the wolfhound needing a laser put back on. But that is enough that... Uh, actually, I still have fatigue and everything. Great. First things first. Cicada, I want to not run hot. When it runs hot, it moves slower. When it moves slower, it gets killed more easily. So, let's give it that extra double heat sink. Alright, so an extra six cooling per turn should be adequate. We are losing the tag, but it's fine. I'd rather the cicada not die. Yep. That sounds good. If we still need more cooling, I might drop the IFF jammer in favor of something like uh, Exchanger. But for now... Let's just get everything repaired. Uh, actually, I... I'm about to drop on a 5 skull mission. Do I want to bring locusts? I don't think so. I really don't think so. So we need 3 days for Lamia. After 2 days... Uh, okay. 
So technical manuals, I believe, could give him the technician trait. But I'm going to send him to the uh, simulators for the easy experience. Cool. One more day. Pause. Hey, We've just completed nope. those upgrades. Stop. Ah. That was way farther than I meant to go. Oof. <laughs> Alright. You know, I really wish there was just a button to... Like, if you have the thing that got destroyed, for it to just automatically slot it in. That'd be nice. Regardless. One more day on the Wolfhound. I'll get it in the schedule. I think I'm actually going to wait for it. And we're going to drop on a 5 skull mission. So, Five Skull Blackout is tricky. So, I think it's limited to six. But, it's also a blackout. So, there is a chance. Okay, Firestarter. Chester. There is a chance that we only fight one Lance. <laughs> There's also a chance that there's a support lance, and then we fight a lance and turrets at the first sight, and then a lance and turrets at the second sight. But you know what? It's a good day to die. Oh yeah, we're only allowed six units. Okay, so I think I definitely value the Aw Scout with its AMS over the Firestarter. Do I really value the Wolfhound over the Firestarter, though? S Wait, what? 714.8876 armor. What? Oh, okay. When did that start happening? <laughs> I just noticed that. I don't know how long it's been going on, but that's funny. Okay. 7.30 versus 7.14. So, the the Wolfhound has slightly more armor. But the Firestarter is more accurate with its pulse lasers. Mm. Then again, actually, the Wolfhound has more built-in accuracy thanks to its accurate weapon energy quirk. I, I really should upgrade the Wolfhound to use pulse lasers instead of just medium lasers. I know some people feel like the me the pulse lasers fall off mid game, but I just disagree. the The accuracy is always nice to have, and whenever you only have five hard points, it shouldn't be too terribly difficult for us to actually get in a couple extra tons to slap pulse lasers instead of the medium lasers. Anyway. I think I am going to drop the fire starter back out. Alright. Five skull blackout. Two star lance. What's the worst that could happen? Let's go. Alright, so. Five skull blackout. This is absolutely just a stress test. I'm probably nuts for trying it because we already saw, what was it? two and a half, three skull mission, whatever it was that we just did, had several heavies. This is almost certainly going to be assault mechs. All right. Almost certainly. On my way. But Move order confirmed. if we're lucky, Copy the that. first sight will be either nothing or turrets, and then we'll just have hopefully a defend base. Um, that way you know, we're not getting hit nearly as hard. All right, let's get down. To um, yeah, I think the hunchback. Now the hunchback should stay in cover. Copy that. Uh, who do I trigger the point with? Is the question. Phoenix Hawk and that. Cicada, I, I think. Uh, Cicada cannot get eight and cover. I lied. 
Copy that. Alright, where are they spawning? What are we against? Where are they spawning? The bright side is if we get absolutely wrecked. Uh oh. Yeah, that's a hot drop. I mean, not a hot drop. That's a neck drop. So they're all gonna have spawn protection. Not ideal. Um. That's a longbow. Okay. Longbow. Great. On the move. Um. So we're as long as we don't get completely obliterated here in the first site, we have the option of easily evacuing if necessary. Locking in coordinates. Which I mean <laughs> that's an awesome. That's an archer. That's another awesome, and that's a long Got something you want done? And they have spawn protection. Six evasion. Um, like I'm afraid to give them a turn. Not gonna lie, but I can't think of how we would be able to kill before they act. Oh, I hate this. <laughs> Please shoot the turrets. Please ignore me. Okay, that wasn't so bad. That wasn't so bad. Commander. And now I have a shot. So I can get my cicada over here. And shoot the awesome in the back from cover with six evasion. Pew! Alright, how's our heat looking? Nice. Cicada generated very little heat there. Cool. Focusing the turret. Love to see it. Waiting for order. Literally best case scenario there. Um Cannot quite get cover and shoot the awesome. So I think I'm Ah, oh, but then the, the longbow can shoot. Phoenix Hawk in the back if I don't do anything. <sighs> That's unfortunate. Um, oh boy. So, I guess let's get right up behind him. I mean, those are hit chances. I've been complaining about the Phoenix Hawk not having hit chances, so I guess all we need to do is find targets with no evasion. So the question here is basically, do I risk the Phoenix Hawk getting shot in the back by the longbow? Or do I drop two evasion and cover against the archer? Yeah, you know what? Getting shot in the back is a guaranteed kill, more or less. So let's try. There's a chance we crit and blow up some ammo here. So definitely going all in. Did not crit, but he is open. Critical hit, Commander. Okay. Turn 16, longbow. What are you doing? Please don't kill anything. Ow. Okay. All right. That wasn't so bad. Ah, uh, something just. Yes, Commander. That wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. You never know what they're going to have in pirate mechs. Yeah, let's kill Copy this that. longbow and keep our light mechs as far away from the other mechs as possible. Alright, longbow is open, engine crit. Reporting critical hit. I'm beginning to get the feeling that we're not actually ready for uh, high school missions. Careful! You don't want to scratch the. Can't plate. imagine why I would feel that way. Um, I'm on the clock. Like I'm backstriking these guys, and they're just not going down. Actually, okay. Who's the biggest threat here? Awesome is a little bit scary. Archer is very scary. Awesome is almost dead, but might have initiative next round before the Cicada and Phoenix Hawk can finish him off. Uh, 
okay. Those hit chances are awful. Those hit chances are really good, but again, he's already open in the back. <sighs> or I could just kill the longbow. You know what? Yeah. I was thinking maybe I would melee the longbow. But no, I think getting our melee mech closer in some bad decisions and is going to be speed. far better. Um, so, yeah, I really need to fix the weapon order in the mech lab. Ah. Something like that. Um, this is potential to kill. So let's. Beautiful. Alright, one assault mech down. How's it going? You can run here, get obstructed line of sight of the other awesome, I think. Or is it? Yeah, it is obstructed. Or I could turn the cockpit hot seat on. Wait, can I get in his back? No. No, I cannot. Unfortunate. That would have definitely been a kill. Um, the only problem here is I don't have vigilance. So I will not have any damage reduction. But that is unobstructed line of sight to the awesome shooting past the archer. There's a lot of potential for things to go well, but there's also a lot of potential for things to go wrong. So no, I'm gonna I'm gonna play it safe, not expose my back, On the move. Move. take the obstructed shot. In, Commander, just doing what I can there. Um. Vida also cannot get into the awesome's back. So here we're gonna... Yeah, we'll just push with the all scout, take a shot on the archer, maybe do a little bit of damage. Nice, 72 damage. Beautiful. Okay. I forgot about turrets. Turrets help. Turrets help a lot. Oh yeah, turrets absolutely help. We're actually doing pretty good. But all it's going to take is one alpha strike to really destroy one of our light mechs. Or really damage one of our mediums. Standing by. That being said, though. Here we go. All we have to do is get to the next point after killing these guys. Give them everything I've got. Worst case scenario, it's an ambush with a lance of mechs and vehicles, followed by turrets being activated against us. Best case scenario is just a defend base, and we'll have turrets on our side. Uh, turn off the dead fire for... Yeah, acid's good. Acid's good. Let's make some bad Let's do that. At high speed. Alright, so we're actually going to put all of our energy weapons after our acid SRMs. That is the one tricky thing about, like, firing different ammo types. With, as in regards to weapon order. It's so like, depending on what ammo type you're firing, sometimes you want it before your laser, sometimes you want it after. Alright. Good to go. So, that we can actually get cover, for evasion and cover no less, and try to just outright kill the archer. Like, yeah, he's hot, so I could have just not. 
taking the shot. But if I had the chance to take one down, I feel that like that's going to be a better idea than just hoping that he doesn't fire. And I feel like the Awesome has like a lesser payload compared to the Archer. Because that Archer just had so many weapon systems. Uh, cannot get behind him. So I guess I'll shoot him from the side. With 90s, yeah. So our Cicada is definitely running a lot cooler. Love to see it. Probably only generating one or two heat per round. Good to go. Good stuff. Uh, I mean, yeah, we don't have cover, but it's fine. Boom, boom, boom. Nice. Structure exposed and a heat sink crit. Heavy damage. Standing by. Uh, I don't want to get too close because we do have a friendly Thunderbolt turret. And nothing says a bad time quite like friendly fire. I mean, actually, we have a decent chance of hitting center here. So I'm actually going to bump this all the way down to last. Target locked. Okay, still hit armor. But hey, he's bleeding out now. And friendly turrets. All right. The UAC-20, or whatever that is, hit. So did the Thermobaric Thunderbolts. Yeah, that's a lot of heat. LRM-15 destroyed. Punch out. No. I'm a little bit surprised, actually. Not gonna risk a stray shot, I'll just take the obstructed line of sight. And honestly, shoot him in the head. Firing a full salvo. That works too. Okay. Hustle eliminated. I'm feeling pretty good about how this is going. But we have confirmed definitely against Waiting assault next here. So I'm gonna go activate the second point and Roger I'll see that. you there. All right, here goes nothing. Confirmed. Getting eight evasion on the cicada, just in case. And activating the point. Is it a defend base? Yes, it is. Okay. Best case scenario. Absolute best case scenario here. That's not such a best case scenario. They have the high ground directly on top of us. Oh, dear. Um, okay, usually they drop, you know, over here. Um, well, then. And yeah, our Bushwhacker got a little bit shredded from behind, but is actually still fresh in the front. So I don't mind putting him towards the front, especially with guarded right, and cover. Let's get down to it. Um, Hunchback. Also going for guarded and cover, but man, we're going to be clustered up way too much. Move order I need to kind of spread to prevent stray shots. <laughs> Damarung. Uh, that's an atlas. Okay. Alright. Um, sure. Phoenix Hawk's still pretty fresh. Wolfhound. Um, four evasion, and hopefully the atlas chooses not to shoot at them. Then Oscout also for evasion and hoping that way. the uh, they don't focus him. Ready for okay. Orders. So they all still have spawn protection. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. Okay. I hate this. Just for the record, I hate this so much. But yep, I'm gonna give him a turn. Acknowledged. Hopefully they shoot a building since I haven't shot them yet. They are such low initiative. We're going to have so much hesitation next round. Why are they such low initiative? Sure, I'll just sit here and think. I mean, I guess they have big, heavy chassis. But the actual, like, 
components in the chassis aren't that impressive. Good to go. All right. Lamia. Haul it ass. I mean, it's a hover tank, so it's always going to have high evasion. I just basically wanted to get the Wolfhound back into cover. That's why I went ahead and acted. Even though I knew it was going to have a lot of evasion. Archer. Doing nothing? Yes, boss. What? Excuse me? I mean, I'm going to do... No shooting. Possibly no less damage, but again, getting the light mech into cover for the cost of one evasion no, might actually be worth it. Was it a leg hit? Indeed, it was. Let's do this. I am actually gonna wait with the Phoenix Hawk, hoping that I can open somebody up before I use his turn. Oh boy. I didn't see how much damage those Goss things did, aye, aye. but uh, that thing's scary. Okay, it's mag shot. UAC fives. I would love a UAC five actually. Plasma cannons. I would not be sad to get plasma cannons. Okay. You know what? Fair enough. See, now that I've hit his leg for eighty damage, I kind of feel like just shooting him from the side instead of the back. And I can't really get a uh, good positioning. I mean, 30.4, that's probably going to be like the best hit chance I can get on the Fulcrum. But it's so evasive, I think I need to just kill it last. Ready for orders. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to wait with Garrison. Need something, chief? Paradox. If I turn on my cockpit hot seat, I think I can actually kill the arch or hit the archer. Not necessarily kill it. But again, he's already been hitting the legs, so I think I'd rather melee the fulcrum or the Atlas, depending on hit chance. Alright, Atlas, what you gonna do? Nothing? Really? On the clock. What do you want? That's very interesting. Okay. I'm going to put Let's my Bushwhacker right next to this Archer, speed. and I'm going to Acid him a lot. Yep. Nice. Yes, Alright, and now that he should be, yep, very opened. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful hit chance there. This might even just be a kill. I'm going to put the medium rifle back to the front, because odds are it's going to hit side torso or leg. Alright. Indeed it did. Bleeding out five activations, he oh, lost one of his hit. LRMs and Artemis ammo. Oh no, two of his LRMs actually. Standing by. But he's almost dead. Alright. Definitely cockpit hot seat time. Atlas. Thank you for volunteering. Thank you for volunteering. How good is our hunchback? Roger that. It missed. Ooh. Negative damage. Okay. Goss rifle crit. Score. Yeah. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Um. On the move. All right. So. I am so sad <laughs> that that melee attack missed. That would have been an amazing test for what our hunchback is capable of doing. And yeah, I'm just shooting the hover tank. 
just because. Okay, sensor lock on the Atlas. Thermal bolts from way downtown. Uh, are you sure you guys needed us? Those are some scary turrets you got. Those are some really scary turrets you got there. I'm on the clock. What do you want? All right. Ooh, did not mean to zoom in that much. Can I get into the Atlas's back? No, I cannot. Okay, he's turned 14, our Hunchback is turned 12. But we can kill the Archer before it acts, definitely. But that's such overkill. No, I should use a Light Mech to finish off the Archer. Um, but the Wolfhound's not going to get to act before him. What about the Oscout? Where's our Oscout? Hello? Oscout? Oh, way over there. Turn 22, though. I can actually act with him right now. Ooh, actually, I want to definitely move Bushwhacker. I do not want an 80 damage stray shot. Um, I mean, Shieldtron. That also needs to die. But I think the Wolfhound will take down the Shieldtron. This Fulcrum, though. Ah. <sighs> Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Let's make some bad decisions. Yeah, I just had to look around for it a little bit. Alright. So acid missiles will most likely hit armor. So I'm fine with this. Nice. Nice. So our pun our, our punch back just shooting followed up by our bushwhacker, killed an atlas. Not too shabby. Understood. Moving fast. This might be a kill, might be a knockdown. Either way, I'm happy. I got it. Okay. Leg went straight through to center. One more for the kill. That's uh that's that's nice. Did it seriously do more than 80 damage though? Did I acid him last turn? Phoenix Hawk has no hit chance on the Fulcrum, but it feels like such a waste to shoot all of this at the Shieldron. You know what? Fine. Roger. Full speed. I'll try. Target lock on enemy. In hindsight, since the rotary rifle was jammed. There wasn't that much reason to not just kill the Shiltron. Especially with the hit chances we had. Commander. But hopefully it's not a big deal. Hopefully we just kill it here. Roger that. Oh dear. Um okay, it gets another turn. Please don't kill any of my mechs. Uh, okay, everything's fine. Everything's uh, fine. Just bounced around in here. I, I don't I know how that was a backstrike, but I'm that's fine. Scared. Oh, wow. <sighs> Nothing got crit. Receiving you. Whew. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna... I'm gonna go ahead and try to kill this Shilshron. He's a lot scarier than the other mech... Or, the other vehicle. A whole lot scarier. Just please die. Okay. If I had lost the Bushwhacker there, it would have been entirely my fault for using the Phoenix Hawk on the hover tank instead of finishing it off. Uh, turn the hot seat cockpit back off. Sprinting gives us a better hit chance because we're closer. And back and back and back and back. Not great. Nice sensor lock. Okay. What 
kind of turret was that? I can't take. I thought he had a lot of missiles when he shot close range, but apparently he had some stuff he didn't fire last round. Mission successful. Okay, seven hundred sixty-four thousand sea bills. We got nine structure away from losing our. 9 or 22, depending on the location, away from losing our bushwhacker there. Whew. Ha ha. Ha. Other than that, they actually didn't hit us very much. But I, I think if that had been any kind of mission type other than Blackout, I think we would have at least lost at least one or two mechs. Bunch of assault parts, not taking those. Goss rifle, large laser, LRMs, mag shot, plasma cannon? Eh. UAC 5s. I do like UAC 5s. Is there ever a world where we put. try to put double AC, uh, UAC 5 on the Phoenix Hawk? And just like take everything else off? Now, I mean, Air 24 Sheath Beacon is just, we throw that in any mech that has no sensors right now, and it's an upgrade. Artemis 4 Battle Computer, nice. Beagle Pro, we already have one. C3 Master, so, C3 Master is interesting. It, it is three tons, which is quite an investment. However, if you're within 270 meters, so... Compared to a regular C3, which is 210, it's an extra 60 meters, so two extra hexes. Allies receive 9%, 6% as compared to 3%, 2%, and get and the enemies get three sensor ping and 30% visibility signature instead of one sensor ping and 10%. So it's effectively stacking three C3s that all work together on top of a single mech. I'm actually kind of interested in running that. Exchanger Double Plus, okay. Fire Control Improved, Night Vision. Uh, we have Pharaoh. We do not have an Ultralight Gyro. Um, Guarding ECMs are good, but we already have three. Heavy Pharaohs, goodish, but we have one. Range Finder, again, great to just slot into anything that doesn't already have. Um, a cockpit. Sensor powered is actually really, really good. Uh, there's so many good things. I'd rather have the Air 24 than the powered sensors. Fire control improved, giving night vision is just really good. Yeah, I think this is how we go. That's a lot of really good upgrade stuff. Some heavy and assault stuff we're going to scrap immediately. We got a plasma cannon. Okay. Plasma cannon plus plasma ammo. That would be actually really interesting to put on the bushwhacker. Combining it with the inferno missiles. Uh, streak 2, okay. SRM4s, we already have 6. I'm just, I'm going to just ditch those. Air 24 beacon, we got the C3 and the master, but we already have two C3s, so I'm going to sell that. Basic cockpit can go. Breaching, we, I mean, yeah. If it doesn't have a fire control already, throwing that in a light mech that only has one big weapon. We saw how effective that is on the Oscout. Pharaoh, ultralight gyro, some basic sensors. Goss ammo, cool. Uh, LRM mine clearance, I'm not a fan. LRM swarm, it has its place. Mag shot ammo. Okay. Alright. Um, LK SRM and Streak SRM. Okay. Alright, 45,000. Yeah, they pretty much entirely focused our allied turrets and buildings. Otherwise, that would have been a lot worse. Bushwhacker only needs four days, despite the fact that it got shredded pretty hard. So, I think what I'm going to do... 
Just wait for everything to be repaired. All right. Job is done, Commander. We have 12 days left. We, we have enough for two financial reports. I think next time... Oh, we, are, we aren't doing anything in engineering. We should fix that. Next time, I think we're going to stick down to the, the three and a half to four range. Four Skull Attack and Defend. Sounds really fun, actually. We saw last time that if we don't destroy the enemy base fast enough, we're going to get swarmed by reinforcements. But this is against local government, so it shouldn't be nearly as bad as going against Comstar, even though it's a higher difficulty mission. So I think that's how we're going to start next episode, and based on how we do in that four skull attack and defend, we might travel to a slightly lower skull planet. Possibly. I had traveled here with the intention of playing more, you know, like, three skull, three and a half skull missions, but we got very few generated, so... Eh, I wanted to test the builds anyway. Um, engineering. We just want to have something going. Uh, we are eventually going to need drop tonnage. And all we need is drive repairs, which actually help us travel faster as well. So let's right, get those up and running. Right away. Um, hey, Commander. We got we got a couple good a fun things that we're going to stick in mechs probably next time we travel. Uh, we already went through the barracks this episode. Store. Another bolt-on AMS. It requires three tons carry capacity, but other than that, I mean, I'm always happy to slap some extra free AMS on. Well, free in the sense that it just takes a support slot, no tonnage, no slots in the actual mech. Um, an exchanger plus, alright. Well, so much for having enough money for two uh, financial reports. Torso mount cockpit, plus one initiative, immunity to headshots. Cockpit is mounted in center torso. Uh, no, that's, that's, no. I'd rather have the torso mounted cockpit that lets you also, you know, do other stuff like have ace piloting. Alright, so that's the store. Do we already check the hiring hall? I believe so. Uh, yep. uh, no, I did not. Mech warrior dependable reckless. Welcome aboard. New mech warriors available. Uh, Dragon is ex military merchant dependable gladiator. Okay. Yeah. Gremlin is pain shunt lost tech athletic comstar gladiator mech warrior spacer criminal assassin. Yeah. Let's get her too. New mech warriors Waiting available. For orders. And then striker is ex military officers. Okay. All right. So yeah, next time, four skull attack and defend, and then possibly travel, probably travel, because this is a four skull planet, right? So I think three and a half skull would be better at, two and a half I think is too low. I think the sweet spot right now is like three, three and a half, preferably three and a half. That way we still have the option of doing, like, four, four and a half skull missions. Yeah. So I think that's, I think that's the call. If we had done anything other than Blackout, we definitely would have lost the Bushwhacker. <laughs> like, they shot twice. One mech, one vehicle, each shot the Bushwhacker in the back once. And if we would have been less lucky with the, the spread of the hits, we would have lost our Bushwhacker. So, gonna be a little bit cautious until maybe we're running all mediums, or maybe we have one heavy, then pushing to five or higher. And again, I'm in no rush to get to five and a half plus, because as soon as you get to the Red Skull territory, aerial bombardments start, and then the challenge run kind of suffers. In any case, that has been your episode of Rogue Tech for the day. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, have a good one.